Hey what's up guys, in this video and in this series of videos I'm gonna be teaching you a bit about AI, how to create AI actors and different kinds of AI. In this video specifically we are gonna go over the very basics of how to create an AI actor in Unreal, but in the future videos I'm gonna show you more specific stuff like how to do a pet, how to do kind of like a zombie or melee mob and so on. So like I said in this video we are gonna go over the absolute basics of creating an AI. So for that I'm gonna simply use a character blueprint because that one is probably the easiest one to make. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna go into the content rover, right click, we are gonna create a blueprint class and I'm gonna select character. Now there is multiple ways of creating AI but I feel like that the character is a good introduction to this because we already have a bunch of things set up. So I'm just gonna call this BP AI test and then we can open it. Now inside this it should look relatively familiar to you because it's basically like a player blueprint. We have capsule component, skeletal mesh, arrow component and then character movement which will allow this actor to move. This is just completely blank character. We don't even have a mesh but we can select it and we can add it. But what if we don't want skeletal mesh? What if we want to just say a cube to test a couple of things? Well we can just not select skeletal mesh at all, select capsule component instead and then just add a static mesh to it. And I'm just gonna select like a cube or something here and we can just just use that. We can also put the skeletal mesh or static mesh a bit down here so it fits. In order for our AI to be able to sense basically a player, we are gonna need to add a new component. So I'm gonna click on add and search for pawn sensing. Now if you select this pawn sensing component, we have a couple of settings under the details in AI. We have the hearing threshold, sight radius and so on. Now the most important one and the most commonly used one is gonna be the peripheral visual angle. Now this is set to 90 by default, but I actually like to change it to let's say around 45 or so. And you're gonna see that once I change this, it creates this kind of a cone. And the reason why I like to use around 45 or even less is because it's much more realistic. Otherwise your AI would basically be able to see anything in the direction it's facing and that's kind of unrealistic in some ways. So this cone shape I feel like works better. Another setting that's important here is only sense player. This is very useful for something where you're gonna have multiple AIs in the same space like an enemy base for example and you're gonna have some patrols or something. You don't want to unnecessarily be sensing other pawns because they're gonna be looking for the player. Now how can we do it so that something happens if we do see the player? Well for that we can scroll down with the pawn sensing component selected and we we have events. Here we have on see pawn, on hear noise and then we have on component activated and deactivated. Again the most common one that you're gonna be using is on see pawn but you are gonna also use the on hear noise if you want to incorporate the hearing. So we can click on the plus here and it's gonna create this event. And this event is actually really nice because it also provides us with a handle to the pawn that it senses which allows us to let's say that you want some kind of an actor that immediately damages the player once they come into this field of vision or we want to send a player a message for, for example in like a stealth game that they are being watched well we can do it through here as well just to test this out what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go into the viewport i'm gonna select my static mesh and i have these two materials that i just created this green and a red one i'm gonna just change the material to the green one then I'm gonna go into the event graph i'm gonna drag in the static mesh i'm gonna drag from it and i'm gonna search for set material I'm gonna plug that into the on C pawn. I'm gonna leave the element index on zero and then I'm just gonna select the red material that I created. Now if I go into the world, I can just drag in the AI from the content driver like this. And you're gonna notice that it immediately jumps on top so that it doesn't overlap with the floor. So if you go into the play now, walk into the field of vision of this actor, it turns red. This means we sense the player and it triggered the event on C pawn. So that about does it for this video. Like I said, it's just a really quick, simple introduction to creating AI characters and blueprints. We are gonna go over how to create more convoluted AIs in the future. The next one is gonna be a simple pet that's gonna follow our player and then afterwards we are gonna start with some combat AIs with like a zombie type of character and then we are gonna move on and over time I hope to create something like a Dark Souls style boss as well and we are gonna see where this series takes us. So I hope you found this helpful, if you did leave a like and subscribe, it helps out a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one, bye!